Hey, everybody. President of Quest Trust Company, Nathan Long, here to talk to you today about one of my favorite subjects, Roth IRAs, or specifically Roth conversions. Roth IRAs are extremely important in wealth building strategies. Everybody should strive to have as much wealth as they possibly can developing inside their Roth IRA. The Roth IRAs are extremely flexible. They grow completely tax-free. Right? There are no required minimum distributions. We don't have to take the money out. Uh, we can take the money out tax-free and penalty-free after meeting two requirements of having a Roth IRA for five tax years and being over the age of 59 and a half. And also you can remove your contributions out of a Roth IRA tax-free and penalty-free at any age at any time. In addition to that, they're a great way to pass on wealth. Right? Whenever you die, you don't have to take out those required minimum distributions as you get older, and you can pass on wealth to your spouse completely tax-free to grow for the rest of their lives, or to your children for up to a 10-year period of additional tax-free growth. So it's extremely important uh, an extremely flexible type of account. The reason why a lot of people don't have Roth IRAs is because there are limitations on them. There are contribution limitations. This year, the contribution limitations are, if you're below the age of 50, $6,000. So it's not a large lot that you can put in. And that does have to be based on qualified income. So you can see that it can be hard to get enough money in there. Also, there are income limits. So as the income limits are reached or you make too much money, you're not allowed to contribute to a Roth IRA. So a lot of people don't have enough wealth or maybe don't even have a Roth IRA. So it's so important to, that's why it's so important to study and understand Roth conversions. When you do a Roth conversion, you can solve a lot of these problems. For example, if I made too much money to put money into a traditional uh, Roth IRA, I could still make that contribution into a traditional IRA and then immediately convert it, thereby basically backdooring those income limit rules. So those could be thrown out. Most people don't uh, even realize that. So we can always make those contributions. But the more important thing is we can take those large old 401ks or SEP IRAs or any of our employer plans that we've had that have grown tax deferred that are typically now sitting in a traditional IRA or what's sometimes called a rollover IRA can be converted to a Roth IRA. And we can do this at any time, at any age and at any income level because the income limits have been removed for doing Roth conversions. So really, really important to understand all of the things to do with the Roth conversion and important to think about for a minute some considerations if you're going to do one. One of the biggest things that we have to understand is when we do convert money from a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA, there are no penalties that apply to that at all. But all of that money, we've never paid tax on it. So we'll have to pay tax on the conversion. After it's in the Roth IRA, it will grow completely tax-free for the rest of your life. And like I said, at least another additional 10 years if passed on to your children. So uh, what are some of the things that we want to think about? Well, as we add to that modified adjusted growth income of ours, how is that going to affect us? How much is it going to cost? One of the big things that we want to think about is time of year. A good time to take a look at doing a Roth conversion is often either at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year. Well, why at the end of the year? At the end of the year, we may look, and if we don't have a, a large tax year, this particular year, I notice a lot of people may have business losses as we go in towards the end of the year here. And as, as you do that, if you've had a you know less profitable year for some reason or in your lower tax margin, Maybe by adding to your tax margin and doing a Roth conversion, the amount you pay in taxes wouldn't be as painful. Why would you do a conversion right after the first year, right into January? 
Well, what happens is if I do a conversion in January, it's going to add to my modified adjusted growth income for the year in which I do it. So if I do it in December, I'm going to immediately have to pay those taxes. But if I do it in January, I'm not going to have to pay the taxes until the following year. That allows me time to make an investment, have that investment grow and pay off even prior to me having to do the taxes. I've seen people buy a house inside the Roth IRA, fix it up, flip it, sell it for a profit, and even remove that money out of the Roth IRA to pay those penalties. Now, they were above the age of 59 and a half, so they could take some of that money out, right? But they paid their taxes with it and still have plenty of uh, room or growth inside the Roth IRA for it to continue to grow tax-free. And they continue to flip tax-free over and over again. So once you've learned how to build wealth in a Roth IRA, it's a wonderful instrument in doing it. But again, other things that you want to think about is how it's going to affect your taxes, right? And also, I think probably one of the most important things to think about when you're doing a Roth IRA is, do I have an investment? How much is that investment? And what do I expect the returns on that investment to be? For example, if you don't have an investment and you do a Roth conversion, your cash could be just sitting there. The magic of a Roth is growth. Often self-directed accounts have a more aggressive growth pattern than others because we're maybe applying our skills. You know, if I'm lending money or buying property or doing a rent thing, I might have a pretty aggressive growth pattern inside of my investment. So in doing that, it may take a very short time to recover from the tax hit that, that happens whenever I do the conversion. The other thing is, is what happens if I didn't have an investment? Again, it could just sit there and it may not be worth it. So, so you want to kind of weigh the differences between the two things. Do I have an investment? What's it going to return? Obviously, my first example, if I was only going to invest $1,000 and I was going to be worth a million, it doesn't matter how much tax and when I'm going to pay for it, I'm going to pay the tax on the $1,000, right? But if, if like most investments, it's a little bit more spread out, you know, that tax hit may be very hard on the upfront and may take some time to recover from the investment. So an analysis should take place as, as you do it. And there's also the need to understand when you would need the money and the investment risk that, that takes place with that. Um, but it's always a great way to create tax-free income for your future for, and for the, your help to create income for your heirs and, as you pass on. Roth IRAs are super important. And I hope that you take a little bit of time and study them. Some resources that you could get is you can go to Quest website. We have a full how to analyze a Roth conversion class. It's worth taking a look at. And like I said, suggest I would do it a couple of times a year. Anal when do I analyze to when to do a Roth conversion? At the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, and when I have a lucrative investment that I'm looking at. Hopefully this has been helpful. Again, Nathan Long from Quest Trust Company. Come back and uh, see us at questtrust.com. All our education is free, whether you're a client or not. Our best clients are educated clients. So come in and join some of our free education. And hopefully this was helpful. Thanks again until next time.